What's up people, Dobbs and Wolves is right here and welcome to another little bit of a special video. Now, pretty much just to tell you truthfully, you can say this is a top 10. You can say actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it down as like my top 10 favourite anime, um, anime shows. Now, just to tell you truthfully people, I am not a person who is known to man to be the person that watches all animated shows and films and etc etc there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands they're going all the way back to the 1980s to even the 70s or up to this generation now so there's a lot of them out there and there really is and also of course you've got your massive franchises as you guys know the ones everybody knows and follows and listens to and listens to music they've got gameplays of it etc 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 so I thought to myself to make it a little bit more difficult for myself I made three little reasons these things should not be on this tier list because they are very important to me to be make sure this is more known noticeable and also for the people who are new to anime and haven't heard of these animes I'd encourage you guys to go ahead and watch them. So the first rule is I must own this anime shit series whether it's on DVD, Blu-ray or even on Netflix. Now, just to let you guys know, I've not watched everything on Netflix just yet. I've watched a couple of them, but I've been too busy to watch every single one of them. I'm a very busy person, as you guys know. For number two, it cannot be films. Meaning, there's no Persona 3 the movie. Yeah, this is not a series. This is actually a film. There's four films altogether, so I cannot count this on the list. The next thing, though, number three, this is a big one. No anime series that are well known to around the world. I mean in the high profile ones, the ones that make the most money, the ones that have got so many series, they're coming out of people's ears. I'm talking about Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, One Piece, Full Metal Alchemist, One Punch Man, the list goes on. The ones that make the biggest amount of money and they've got series upon series upon series, different spin-offs, you get my drift. Enough series to literally keep you going for at least a couple of years. Okay? So that's pretty much my main three I'm putting down as so you guys know. There is a loads of things I have to put down on the list but if I talked about them now, this video may go on for at least a week. <laughs> so hopefully you understand. Now just to let you guys know. Remember, Netflix videos that I've seen, things that I own on DVD, and the ones I own on, on Blu-ray. And you may also say VHS as well, but first off, this was a massive list. I'm talking about pages upon pages of animes that I've actually got in my collection. So, I'm going to give you guys three mentions on this list. Not on my top three, and not on my top ten either but they were just a little bit off from being in the top 10. So let me just go through these. These are these are random, okay? So they're not like third to last, second to last, and first to last, okay? So the first one I want to talk to you really quick is another Slash Corpse Party. That show is ridiculously scary, to be honest, and quite dark. If you guys have not seen it, definitely go and watch it. The main reason why this is not on this list is because I used to own the DVD, I no longer have it because number one it broke and the second one corpse party is only exclusive to japan and the only way for me to get it into to get it from japan is to buy it from over there but it's too expensive to get it shipped over here so probably if i'm going back to japan next year or maybe the end of this year i might able to get myself a copy of it but besides that though this can't be on the list the second one i want to talk about is the fist of the north star made an amazing film the live action film is absolutely terrible, don't watch the live action one, watch the animated one. But the series came out in the 1980s, it's really really old and it does, it has aged a bit bad to be honest. If you guys really want to know about the story I'd encourage you to try and play the game. But definitely go and check out the series, it's a lot of fun but really, it's really really old so for the people who are into the new anime, you might, you guys might think this is a quite a bad series. but. To be honest, I really do like it. And number one for the for the mentions is Gans. 
Gans was going to be absolutely on this list, but one thing really, really screwed with me with it on not to be on this list is I'm not going to try and spoil it for you, it's just the ending. The ending ruined it for me, to be honest, because it ended off with a cliffhanger. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to tell you what happened, it just ended with a cliffhanger. And when I that when that happened, I thought to myself, there's going to be a season two, I'm waiting for it. It got cancelled, they never made another one. So I was fuming about that. So that's why it's definitely not in my top ten. So pretty much, that's my little mentions. Time to get this started. Hopefully there's no no copyrighted anime music that I'm playing right now. Let's get on to number 10. Number 10 is Attack on Titans. Now, people say this is well known, everybody knows this. I actually have a few friends who love anime and I've never watched Attack on Titans. And I've encouraged them to watch it. Why is it down on the lower to the list? I'm, like, I'm just saying right now. I'm going to try and be quick as well, just letting you guys know. The main reason why this is number 10 anyhow is because the first season... Hands down, the best season out of the lot. Action-packed, good amount of story that we need to know. 10 out of 10. Season 2, from the very first episode of Season 2, all the way up to like the four, fourth to last episode, it got really, really slow. A lot, a lot of talking, and not a lot of action-packed. But when it got to the final, final episodes, it really put the pedal to the metal, and it was getting really good. But... It was just too late for me to say it was an amazing series. Then the third season, a lot, a lot, a lot of talking and not, a, not enough action. That I'm just saying that for myself. There's not enough action for me to be in an Attack on Titan show. To be honest, season three though does have a lot, a lot of stuff that's canon and is pretty much based on the story. So if you guys like the story, definitely go ahead and watch season three. But I love the action in the show. But I did like the story. It's number 10, and I can't wait for the fourth season, the final season, to come out in the United Kingdom. Number 9 is the series of Ghost in the Shell. Now, people may not know this series that existed. They've seen the films, they've seen the second one, and they've seen the live adaptation of it in the cinemas a few years back. Did get slated, but I actually enjoyed the live action film. And the series, I actually really do like it. I really do. It's a massive series. It's got, I think if I remember, it's got about, as a DVD box set, I think it was eight discs, which is huge to be honest. And my God, it was epic from the very beginning all up to the end. And some of the characters are quite entertaining as well, because you've got like these little tiny robots who talk. And it's just, oh, it's just awesome to be honest. If you guys have not seen the series, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, because it's got a lot of impact in the story. And there's so many plot, plot holes and plot holes that need to be filled in and this series really does make it and I freaking love it to this day. So that's why it's my number nine. Number eight, people may think I'm a bit of a weirdo with this, High School of the Dead. One of the well-known ones for fanfic um, and a lot, a lot of fan service. You guys know that because of the big titty women. But to be honest, I wasn't caring about that. I was caring about the gore. The gore was there. It was amazing with gore. And I've always asked myself, can they please do a zombie show, whether it's live adaptation or an anime that was involved in a high school? We've we've asked this for many, many years, and thankfully manga made this, and I was so freaking I was so hyped for it. It was out for Japan for a couple of years, and I was hoping to myself, hopefully we get this in the United Kingdom. We finally got it, and I freaking loved it. Even the OVA version, the um, extra episode at the end of the series, we got that too, which somehow, someway, we did. Do not know why, because it's a lot, a lot of fan service. But to be honest, though, it was just an amazing series. I loved every minute of it. All the characters I remember, they're so funny. The co it was comedy, it was gore, it had all the elements of emotions in this, in this show. I loved it. But there's a sidetrack with it. Why is it not higher? The main reason is because it was going to have a second season. Even the OVA said to, said to be continued. Where's season two? We don't have season two. If manga are still planning for season two, for God's sakes, manga, get it done already. I want season two. I really do. But it's been a couple of years now and I don't think they'll ever make a second season. It's been it's been out since I was in high school. So yeah, my my look for season two is not gonna happen, but still, I love season one. 
Number seven is Steins Gate. This is sick. I didn't get to watch the anime first off. I actually bought the video game Steins Gate on the PS4 and on the PS3. And it was a reading game. So as you guys know, I had to take my time with it. And boy, did I enjoy it. I really did. And like I said, reading for me is difficult, as you guys know. But for a game that's involved with a lot of reading, for a person who's dyslexic, and to actually get along with the story, means a lot to me. And when I found out they finally was going to release the DVD of the series in the United Kingdom, I went ahead and pre-ordered it instantly. And I binged watched it from the very beginning all the way up to the end. I started at 6 o'clock in the morning and I finished off at 8 o'clock at night. I took myself some breaks because I really needed to, but holy crap guys, it was awesome. Loved every minute of it and hopefully they do make a second season. I really do because it definitely does deserve a second season. Something extra, maybe a little bit on the sideline of the alternate universe, but we don't know about that. So yeah, number seven, Steins Gate. Number six is something that's very dear to my heart, Food Wars. Ooh, Food Wars, freaking sick series. I love it. Now you guys know, before I did YouTube and everything, I was a trained chef. I'm still, I'm a trained chef. So I knew how to cook and everything. And when I was in high school, this series never really existed in my time of day. But when I got into college, this thing existed. And when I got into it, I thought, do these recipes really work? They freaking do. It's because so, because what I really did, I pretty much learned them all in college and tried the dishes myself. And they work. Holy shit, people, they work. And the story is sick. I really love the story. It's fantastic. But there is a situation about it why it's not even higher. It's because the final season that we were anticipating to get in the United Kingdom never came. It never, it never got over here. It only came out in Germany, United States and Japan. And a few other countries, I think Australia got it as well. But for me to buy that version over there, it's cost me an arm and a leg. I am not going to spend that money on it. If I really have to, I have to go and watch on Crunchyroll, which I did. And for freaking hell, man, that end of the series was horribly but wrong. Season 1 and 2 was amazing. Perfect. Five stars. But the third season, wishy-washy. Sorry, Food Wars, but you're my number six. Number five is a game as well, is a game that I first played first before I watched the series, and that's Tokyo Ghoul. The video game was awesome. I hacked and slashed them, loved it. It was quite difficult. I enjoyed it. Got very, very interested in it. So I bought the whole DVD set, and holy crap, it was amazing. Same again. All the emotions flooding in. A bit of comedy, a bit of endurance, a bit of revenge, a bit of sadness, romance. He had everything in it. And to be honest, it's amazing. A lot of people may say that this is one of the big massive hitters as a community. But I know a lot of people who never heard of this anime before. Maybe heard a little tiny bit, but I've, I can always say to them, have you watched it? A lot of them do say, no, they've heard of it, but never watched it. So I definitely encourage you guys to definitely watch Tokyo Ghoul. It is a sick show. Absolutely amazing, 10 out of 10. Number four, it's known for a lot, a lot of voiceovers on YouTube and it's one of my favorites. Helsing, oh. <laughs> Helsing is freaking one of the best. One of the best. Why? Because it had two different seasons, okay? The first season that came out, it came out halfway through the anime making the manga. So the, the first season that came out was the non-truthful ending, which a lot of people were angry with, but I enjoyed it. But when I found out that the manga was done and then I hear the rumours of a real Helsing series, I was there. I pre the whole lot. And then of course, there's the bad romance at the end of it. We got all of them, except for the last two episodes. Assholes. We had to wait a couple of months. Actually, no, we had to wait two years in the UK to get the last two episodes because, if I remember, I think what I've heard, it was sort of a lot of parental guidance and everything. It was saying to be extreme and plus maybe been banned. But luckily, we got our last two episodes on Crunchyroll and also 
on Netflix and also we finally got it on DVD after a lot of highly demanding and to be honest it's amazing if you guys have not seen Helsing definitely watch it I would not encourage you guys to see the complete series I would encourage you to see the real one which is Helsing Ultimate that's the story you need to watch because it's sick it's gory it's action-packed there's so much about it There's a lot of comedy in it too it's super fun and if you guys are not into the real story and you want a bit of pure comedy I'd insist you to go on YouTube and type in the abridged version of Helsing I'll even leave the link down below so you guys to watch it because it's freaking hilarious that's my number four number three is a Netflix exclusive wish it was gonna out come out on DVD but it didn't Castlevania you guys know I love Castlevania to whole playing a lot of the video games and collecting the rare and pricey Castlevania games but when I found out this game this show was coming out on Netflix I was happy but I was upset because I never had Netflix for so many years to this year was the only year I got Netflix and hopefully I'm going to keep it ever since. So when I first got Netflix for the very first time, I binge watched it. Over every minute of it, from season one up to season three, I never stopped. And I was so happy that this series was based off of Castlevania 3, one of the hardest Castlevania games that has ever been made on the NES. Including other generations, I still think Castlevania 3 is the hardest Castlevania game known to man. Forget about Symphony of the Night, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse is the hardest one. And season 1 and the end of and the beginning of season 2 was based off of that. And then of course see, the end of season 2 and season 3 was after it, which I like. And I cannot wait for the next season to come out, but I'm still waiting for it. Hopefully it's not cancelled. If it is, I'm upset because it's been an amazing ride to watch that series. Number 2 is what I'm waiting for. Season 2, I'm waiting for this. Beastars. People may find this a very weird series. I actually really did enjoy it from the very beginning. I love the way the artwork, the way the artwork is. The story is sick because it's no humans in it. It's just talking animals and they're making it look like they're human-like. And it's like so good because it's like the, the carnivores and the herbivores and everything, they're all put together. So it's like one it's like taboo and everything it's like everything that's all about it it's like all the emotions but all the things that are in the all the forbidden stuff like the taboos the freaking violence of it the um the laws of animals and everything it's like in the story i'm not going to try and spoil anything about it but one of the characters was drinking rabbit's blood and that's a forbidden thing because it's like it boosts up their their hunger for violence and everything. It's insane, people. A lot of people have made jokes about this series. They really have. For good and for good, but for also for the worse. To be honest though, I freaking love it. You guys can call me a furry for all you want, but this series rocks. It really does. And I can't wait for season two because I have freaking high expectations for it. I've been literally blanking myself with a booming blindfold away from spoilers on YouTube because there's so many out there already. I'm waiting for it to come out on Netflix over here. It's not out yet for in the United Kingdom. I'm sure they do have it in America and then also in Japan. But for us in the UK, we haven't got it yet. So please, I am waiting for it to come out. But the last thing left is number one. And again, I, w I played the video game before I played the, before I watched the series. Persona 4, you can't go wrong with a series. Now, it's pretty much a series about the whole entire game. So you can have two different ways. If you guys are not a gamer and you want to play Persona, but you do not want to spend hundreds upon hundreds of hours of this game, and you can play at least 100 hours on Persona 4, meaning Golden or the original, you can go ahead and spend at least a whole day watching the whole series and to have the same experience as it was in the video game. It's amazing. Every single character is down to the T. They've got all the original actors from Persona 4, the video game, in this series. Every single one. I'm talking about all of them. Teddy, Naokami, everybody in this is perfect. 
and also the little scenes that we loved in Persona 4, you know, all the comedy bits like in the camp, in the hotels, everything like that, is all in this. That's why this series is a godsend. And I wish, I really did wish though that Persona 3 the movie was a series, not an actual film, because it would have been a lot better. And I am praying, I'm praying every day for us in the UK to get ourselves our own hands on Persona 5 the animated series. I am waiting for it. When that anime comes out, that's going high and up straight up to number one, 100%. But I can't go against and um, pretty much figure out if it's true or not, if it's going to be a good series or not. But I have a good feeling it will be. But pretty much though, my favourite anime series that is not a highly profile series from any other anime is Persona 4. Now, like I said though, there is a lot more great animes out there that I have not seen. So, if there is an anime out there that was not on this list and I do not own it or I've even never watched it, please leave it in the comments down below and I'll research it myself and I'll have a watch. And please people, don't go for them stupid anime ones that I know that a lot, a lot of people have watched. Oh god, that freaking soundtrack! Oh no! My head! <laughs>